All right. Thank you everyone for joining our pillar committee, the inclusive practices pillar meeting. Appreciate everyone being here. Um, we will uh, start with a quick roll call and uh, move through the agenda. Um, so Director Johnson is here. Chair Rydell. Present. Superintendent Carpenter. Here. Lisa Atkins. Present. Atkins. Sorry, Lisa. Kelly Present. Hayes. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yeah, sorry, here. Jason Hobson. I am here, thank you. And Sarah, uh, Sarah is not lost and is not here today. And then I have Ian on this as well. Ian? Ian will not be joining us today. He has the day thank off you. today. No. Thank you. All right, seems like uh, we have a Solid group of folks here to help us through this pillar meeting. Um, B is mission, vision, and values. I will read the first and pass the next two. Our mission is to equip every student with the knowledge and skills necessary to be resourceful and successful. Superintendent Carpenter, can you read our vision for us, sir? Our vision in short is by the year 2030 to be considered a premier school district in the state of Oregon. Thank you. And our values are to inspire, engage, and achieve. I have on here uh, standards of excellence as well. Collaboration, respect, consistent, innovative, empathy, and perseverance. Um, I have um, item C, if everybody's ready to move on as a board member updates. So I will um, I'll start uh, by just offering up a suggestion. And I talked to Superintendent Carpenter about this in, briefly after the last board meeting. Um, and I haven't connected with Chair Rydell, but it might be beneficial um, prior to presentations to the board um, on the pillar committee if um, the board members, uh, Chair Rydell and myself, have a quick peek at that presentation so we can make sure that we can possibly share some of that information one in our board updates um, and then two um, as we're looking through we might be able to offer some suggestions um, that what we think is important for the board not to hear but from the perspective maybe more of context from a community member standpoint so i just wanted to offer that as a suggestion for the group as we move forward and presenting to the board uh, with the pillar updates uh chair Riddell, any updates from you you're muted, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made it a few weeks without making that mistake, but here we are. So, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the suggestion. I think that's a good idea, and I'd love to be able to take a peek at that ahead of time and, again, add some, some more to the conversation instead of just trying to digest it. So, great idea. Um, really, no other board member updates, except we have one youth football team still playing. So we've got another playoff game. Uh, seventh, eighth played uh, Franklin last week uh, in the downpour rain at Southridge High School, um, and uh, won 44 to nothing. So, um, so we play Glencoe this coming Saturday in Clack Clackamas High School, 1 p.m. So anybody wants to watch seventh and eighth grade football for the for the last two raw last game of the year. So that's all I have for updates right now. Thank you. Congrats, Chair Rydell. Super job by your squad out there. Um, so that's the only two board members in here. So Superintendent Carpenter, Carpenter any updates? Just want to thank uh, the board of the directors and this pillar team uh, for this transparent, open and honest communication uh, to the public as we try to execute the mission, vision, values of our strategic plan. Uh, as we're all waiting for, excited and anticipating, uh, we've received the survey results of our uh, employee engagement, our parent satisfaction, our student engagement, um, and our service or our commitment to quality service. Uh, we've had the opportunity over the last couple of weeks uh, to roll out that data. Um, and at this point, our leaders are in the process of building leader action plans in collaboration with all of our stakeholders. So there's a lot of great work happening right now. Uh, and I'm excited to share with our community, with our families, and with Estacada's stakeholders, uh, but most importantly, the Executive Board of Directors, uh, what our plans are as we build continuous improvement strategies uh, to make our school district the best place for students to learn, for teachers to teach, 
for employees to work and for parents to send their children to school. So um, that's your superintendent's report for this one. And uh, looking forward to our, our pillar work today uh, to make sure we're moving uh, in an aligned direction towards accomplishment. Thanks, Superintendent Carpenter. I know that the board members, I think I could speak for most of them that we're super excited to see some of that data and see where we are and then look at the actions and the outcomes uh, from that. So appreciate that. Um, pillar, uh, pillar leader dashboard updates, Lisa, Jason, Kelly, you guys wanna take it on from here? Sure, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna share the screen here so you can see our presentation. Get it into present mode. There we go. Great. Thank you. So um, we just kind of wanted to reflect and go back a little bit um, on our beginning goals. And that was in the, again, the year 2030, the SKS School District had developed a strong collaborative culture, reflecting our student population, supporting and educating children in an inclusive, safe learning environment. This was the goal that we came up with um, in fall of 2020. And um, we are going to keep striving for that. Um, on the next slide, um, Kelly and Jason rolled out in our last uh, board meeting some of these tentative uh, results prior to getting the final numbers. So again, um, our new goals have been set. So by fall of 22, we're hoping our student engagement survey will go up to 4.04, and that's from a 3.94. Employee engagement survey, we're hoping to go up, continues to grow up, grow up, go up to 4.27 from our 4.22. And then district services survey, again, we're hoping to go up another 0.05 to 4.4. So that's what we're striving for over this next year. And within our two cycles, um, we plan on pushing as far as we can to get there. On our next slide, as Superintendent uh, Carpenter was talking about, what are we doing now? Our leaders are meeting with their teams. We're, they're reviewing the results and they're celebrating the wins. They're working together to develop the plans to improve the overall goals. So as you can see over to the right, we have 14 employee engagement rollout scheduled, seven of which are completed as of today. Our nine district services rollouts are scheduled and three have been completed. Six student engagement rolled out and one completed. And the student engagement uh, survey results came out a little bit later because that was a longer survey. Um, so that's why we don't have as many um, rolled out. The rest of them, as you can see, um, are scheduled to go out by the 18th of November. And so by the December board meeting, we should have some really good data um, on what we're um, planning on doing over the next 90 days. Okay. So as Lisa talked about, we've been rolling out the employee engagement leader action plans. And during the rollout, it looks like um, a leader is presenting the score in the survey as the results have given us and really focusing on those bottom three measures. And then you come up with your team with what, what things are working well that you could keep doing and what are some things that we need to stop doing or what are some new actions that we can help to improve on. And so this is just an example from a superintendent score um, and I will say we wouldn't normally always pick the superintendent score, but as that was one of the earliest rollouts that we could do, we have some good information to share here, and it's a good example of what we want to do. So we heard in the last one that monthly visits to each school were working well. And so now in this cycle in 21-22, we're going to be focusing on um, continuing to do those visits and really focusing on implementing the continuous improvement in the classroom, being visible in the building. And then the superintendent will conduct the plus delta, which is what went well and what didn't go well from the leaders after the visit to know if it was productive and on track with accomplishing the shared goals. This is really focusing on bringing, bringing that PDSA cycle into the classroom, which is something that we've been wanting to do as we dove more into our suitor work, is bringing it all the way to the classroom level. Uh, I'm going to go to the next example here. Um, Principal Amy Hudson was able to roll hers out, and one of the things that she heard is that we want to continue to promote collaboration with staff and clear communication. So we're continuing the strategic action we're continuing here is to uh, roll out instructional expectations provided to staff that are always aligned with building and district priorities. So she'll use rounding and spot checks, observation progress, uh, progress tracking. 
This is really promoting the open and honest two-way communication that staff told us is so important to have in one of the areas that we want to grow our sport in. Any questions on either of those before we move on? I don't have any questions. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, remind me what PDSA stands for, Kelly. Sure. Uh, plan, do, study, act. Not what I was thinking, so I'm glad I asked. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Those are the, the core foundations of our short cycles of improvements. And, you know, Kelly, if you'll go back just one, um, when it comes to, uh, that's okay, when it comes to um, the superintendent's report, obviously this was the feedback from uh, the 12 uh, individuals who I directly supervise. And, and in that, uh, one of the things that I need to improve is uh, my communication uh, to them about specific things that affect their performance, uh, their performance evaluation. And so, uh, so as I go and visit them, uh, I visit each school for two hours every single week. So I make it to one building uh, once a month for a very strategic targeted amount of time. Uh, and half of that is visiting school or visiting classrooms, rounding with kids, rounding with teachers. Uh, but then the second half of that classroom visit or school visit um, is to really talk about uh, their performance and how things are going and and uh, and debriefing uh, of my observation of the school in general uh, through that visit. And so my hopes is um, that by having that conversation and then asking them to make sure that that conversation uh, that the leaders were able to get what they wanted out of that in terms of clarification of, um, of, of where they're at from an evaluatory perspective is there. And so just a little bit deeper into the weeds in detail is, is an example of you know a leader action plan that I've made based on the feedback uh, of my 12 direct reports. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to? Um, we will be rolling out district services as still a part of our pillar. We just those rollouts haven't necessarily happened yet. So uh, I'm going to put the shared presentation back here and hand it over to Jason. All right. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Kelly, Lisa. So on the uh, student engagement and inclusive practice, there's a couple things that uh, we're really excited about. One of them is that last year, as you guys re re recall, we uh, had a goal of our least restrictive environment, and we are super excited that we have exceeded that goal by a significant margin, especially at the elementary level. So uh, that is a huge win and a huge celebration over the last several years that we've been working on that. So in bullet point number two, that we're going to continue to maintain and monitor that, but that's not going to be a focus area goal for this upcoming next year cycle. Uh, what we will be engaging in, though, is our student engagement uh, survey results. And so as we described before, we've had one team at the high school roll out the survey results with the with students and gathering that feedback, which is great. The other school will be doing the same thing, rolling out the, the results with their, their students and gathering that student voice and helping them, the leaders build their plan based on what the students and staff are telling them. So that'll be uh, uh, great data to, to, to dive into and create those leader action plans. And then we have our co-curricular activity goal, and that has yet to be developed. And I want to talk a little bit about that uh, in the last board meeting. Um, it was I, I we I have been challenged by having trying to combine the middle school and the high school. So in working with the uh, the team, the administrative team at the at the high school and middle school, we're going to separate that goal into a middle school goal and a high school goal instead of trying to combine uh, and share. So we're going to have a middle school co-curricular goal and a high school uh, co-curricular goal. So those are being developed as we speak. Uh, so I don't have a annual goal to, to present tonight, uh, but that's being worked on. And that's really based on some of the feedback that we received to, to kind of help simplify that measure and continue to do that questioning and deeper dive into our co-curricular activities. Jason, if I could just add, sorry, if I could just add, I, th I think one of the other areas that was hit on in there was the, um, if an individual student fell into multiple buckets. Um, right, yep. And so that might be something to make sure that uh, we're trying to identify as well. 
Yeah, yeah I definitely took that back in my rounding session with the, the leaders there and saying, how, how can we best uh, think about students that are participating in those exactly multiple, multiple categories and multiple activities. So that's kind of where we're at for the uh, update on the uh, student engagement and our inclusive practices. That's wonderful. Thank you. Anything else, Lisa, Jason, Kelly? Not for me. No. Okay. I think we're moving on to uh, past E or within E, right? Um, and the uh, our strong, inclusive, collaborative culture goal in 2030. Escada School District has developed a strong collaborative culture reflecting on our reflecting our student population, supporting and educating children in an inclusive, safe learning environment. Um, so you had some of the goals and some of the um, information that you share. Is there are there specifics on pillar health updates that you guys would like to give? Um, no, 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 nothing additional at this time. And then Jason, with your next 30 days, was that in that last slide that you presented? Yeah, and I think that kind of goes for all of us. The next 30 days is really supporting the leaders that will be building and rolling out their plans. And again, continuing to, to round frequently, asking those, those questions about how do you know, what's the data telling you, and taking that deep dive together on uh, the leader action plan and supporting that. You know, this this is a little bit in the weeds, but I'm gonna um, I, I I probably wouldn't ask to see it either. But it's something to think about when. Um, so you you're targeting, let's say, 0 0.05 basis points, right, or five basis points improvement, or whatever this improvement is over the course of the year, and you have strategic things that we're putting into place. Um, it might be beneficial to put a, a value on each one of those as far as where you're rating where it would impact so on some of the areas that you have in there is that is that pushing the needle and i and the reason why i say it is it it puts um a focus on essentially that goal as far as moving that needle um and it puts an emphasis on the reason why you're doing this is because we're making a point or two basis points improvement so it might be something you're thinking about when you're looking over 30 days on how to continuously evolve and improve in that, like what value are you adding to each one of the, the actions that are that are happening in order to increase the, the uh, engagement or the satisfaction and so on. I, I don't think it's something that you might do in this room, but as you guys are working through the plan, that might be something you're asking yourself or asking as you're building those individual actions. Just a thought. Something It's work that we do in my own job, so that's why... I, I, I thought I'd bring it up as a, as a, as a concept. Appreciate that. Yep, of course. Yeah. Well, Chair Idell, I could be wrong, but I think we're on to F. Does that sound right to you? Are we down to, are we, are we down to public comment at this point? You're muted again, so I will take that as a yes. And um, so we're, we're down to F. If there's any, there, is there any public, uh, or are we are viewing this here? We're not, we're not live. Nobody has signed up for uh, to, to make a public comment. This meeting. okay, thank you. I appreciate it. And that takes us to uh, item G. Uh, anything for the group? Anything good for the order? Good for good of the order. Last comments. Uh, I, I would like to just uh, for the, the next 30 days, uh, you know, again, if, if this uh, pillar committee could uh, prior to this coming Wednesday's board meeting, if uh, if the board presentation could be shared maybe to the entire committee, um, I think that would be good for everyone like uh, Director Johnson had mentioned at the beginning. Um, and uh, the, the second thing, too, is I think in our next pillar meeting, uh, I would like to recommend that we just take a quick look at our strategic plan uh, to make sure of all the strategies that uh, that we've got things in play um, that meet the needs of all of it. It's hard to believe, but this is year four uh, of the strategic plan. And uh, so I think this would also be a good time just to just as a team uh, to review each strategy. I think there's four strategies in there. Um, I, I think that we'll find that we're pretty strong on all of them, although I do know that there's some birth to school stuff that we probably need to take a look at. And that might be a fun opportunity to collaborate a little bit in this group as we think about uh, actualizing all strategies inside this pillar. I think it's great timing with the, the holidays upon us. Um, to take a, a look at that again. Chair Adela, I see you came off mute. Anything you wanted to add, sir? 
Yes, my apologies. I've been uh, clearing my throat a little bit today, so I didn't want you guys to have to listen to it. It's all that uh, passionate coaching that I did Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I had to be a little hoarse today, so <laughs> no, nothing, nothing more for me to add today. Lisa, Jason, Kelly. Nothing more. Thank we're good. Thank you. All right, looks like we are set for 12-9, December 9th yes. as our next go. Same time we're looking at? I think so, yes. So that is is a Thursday. That's a Thursday, right? Oh, it should be the Monday before the board meeting. Yeah, so that would, so that would yeah, that'd be the 6th of December. Okay, I will change that. Noted we're having a date change of December 9th to December 6th. We'll go 4 p.m. again, I would assume. Yes. Okay. And uh, I is adjournment, if there's nothing else. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Uh, and Jason, Lisa, Kelly, for uh, taking time to prepare the slides and walk us through some of that. And I really appreciate you guys' time being able to share the information that the great things that are going on in the district in this pillar. So appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. I wish you didn't bite. Um...